Had to pop out for a break here, cause I'm uh, I got, I got words. <laughs> so uh, <clears throat> I have, I I just had to. This this just happened, and I'm really bad at keeping track of stuff, memorizing, you know, remembering little bits of things. It gets stuck in the back of my head, and it doesn't come up until later, until something reminds me of it. So I wanted to get this out real quick. Um, <clears throat> I have some uh, mental health issues, and it's part genetic, part whatever, I don't know. The point is, I, I get pretty paranoid. I get paranoid about things, I get paranoid about people. Ah, the rain's clearing. Um... And it was always the case for me. It was just something, you know. I see people talking and there's there's that voice in my head that says they're talking about you. They don't really like you. It's all fake. They're all fake. They're all against you. And that's a, just a, a wonderful voice to have in your head. <laughs> um, but I'm, uh, I'm untreated for all that. For know, a variety of reasons. Uh, but the time that I really got out of it was when I came to Jesus, when I came to the Lord, and just understanding that, you know, life is full of stressors, life is full of, uh, means for anxiety, we have needs and desires and things that we, you know, hopes, dreams, all that great stuff. And they're great things. They serve as drivers, but they also serve as, uh, as, I guess, idols is the right word. They're things that we hold up, things that we hold in high esteem, things that we really want. We want to get those things. And um, whenever something threatens those things, we feel defensive. We get, we get angry. We, get, we, get, uh, we start acting out. And that's kind of where that feeds into, that idea of the, um, like, people are talking about me at work. Well, that, I'm going to get fired, and I'm not going to have a job anymore, and I'm not going to be able to provide for my family. Uh, you know, I'm going to have to go looking for another job. That's really stressful. That job probably won't be as good as this job. And all of that happens. You know, the, the cycle repeats. It just, it's a feedback loop. It makes itself worse and worse and worse. And uh, especially when it has to do with people, because you get suspicious of people and you're like, okay, these people aren't really my friends. These people are really actually against me. They're, they're secretly plotting against me, even though I have no evidence of it. But that's just like, it's right where I go. It's right where I go. And it takes, uh, it used to take effort to turn that off. But at this point, like, I still get it. But I, I have this trump card. I have this overarching this this powerful play that's just like oh you're gonna lose your job you're gonna lose your family you know at some point I'm gonna mess up you know you're gonna mess up bad enough that everything just comes crashing down your whole life will be over and above all that I can say that the only thing I really need is Jesus like as long as he's there, as long as I'm reaching toward him, as long as I'm trying to get him, like he's there. And it, it's and I know that he can provide. So that takes all of the pressure. All of the pressure off. You know that like I said, those stressors, those drives of like, I gotta be there, I gotta do this, I gotta accomplish. You know, because accomplishing and being there and doing that will get me this and get me that and get me the other and get me that you know you put it all in yourself and it's just not up to you it's just not up to you you can't do it all because you are not in control of all of this it's raining right now i would prefer it not rain good luck with that <laughs> you know someone else is in control which means i'm out of control which means I have a lot of pressure off of me. And that pressure, it goes on to Jesus. So when someone says, hey, this is, uh, you know, these people are really against you. They're doing this. They're plotting. That, that voice that's always going on. Say, okay. 
Uh, maybe you're right, maybe you're wrong, but it doesn't matter because I got someone watching out for me. And uh, I have I have some friends who are. Uh, I mean, just that. That's that's huge. It it takes all, almost all. You know, you still have you still have to strive, you still have to perform, you still have to reach for them, you still have to do the things that the still small voice says to do, or at least try your damnedest. Um, but it takes so much pressure off. It takes so much pressure off. In the world today, today especially, is just like, you should be able to. You should be happy. You can do it. You can do it. You can't. You can't do it. You cannot do it. Alone. Can't do it alone. And God just takes so much so much of that off of me. It's such a huge, huge relief. And, um, you know, you can lament that you, you lost that idea, that false concept of control. You know, well, I really want to be in control. Yeah, well, yeah, you, you, give, you give it up to God. You are giving things up. You are losing things. Uh, but you're definitely gaining things. And if I look at, you know, I've got friends that are non-believers, and I, I'm, I'm happy to say, look, if I'm wrong, if they're, you know, I'm analytical, I'm, a, I'm about ideas, I want to I wanna shift a context and see if everything holds up. If I'm wrong about God, if there is zero God, if I die and go in the dirt and get eaten by worms, and that is it, if that is it, then I can at least be objective about the consequence of my belief. The consequence of my belief is I lose the anxiety, I lose the fear, I lose the pressure, I lose the paranoia or, or the results of the paranoia, because the results are usually a feedback loop of, these people are out to get me, so they're not really my friends, therefore I won't treat them like my friends, and now guess what, they're not my friends. <laughs> it's this self-fulfilling prophecy that you just get stuck in, and I don't do it anymore, I'm gone, it, it's gone, I'm free of it. And it's just amazing. Uh, but what I was saying is, I, I get so much more out of this. From a purely practical perspective, no religion, no faith involved, just if I was faking all of this, I still, well, you, you can't fake it, you have to believe it, obviously, otherwise you've got that niggling doubt in the back. Um, it eats away at you, but I get so much out of it, and it's such a huge blessing. And it's changed me so much for the better that it's just unbelievable. So, I know anxiety today is a, a big deal. And people make uncomfortable memes about their... Uh, or, or what if I had a thought bubble over my head? Ha 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 ha, I want to die. Ha 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 ha, yeah, I'm... I'm suicidal. Not really, but... <laughs> I mean, a little bit. But not really, but a little bit. Just a little bit. It, it hurts. It hurts to see people joke about this stuff. Because jokes serve a purpose. And usually it's to speak the uncomfortable truth. Or at least a portion of that truth. Or to take a little bit of that truth and wrap it in a, a burrito. <laughs> So that it's a little bit more palatable and you can kind of see, are people taking that truth? Like, is that real? Do they agree? If they pick up the burrito and they don't like it, they don't have that truth. But I feel like there's a lot, there's a lot of hurt out there that could be disappeared, that could be, could just vanish. People are suffering unnecessarily. I know it takes a lot to believe, but you get a lot. You get a lot more than you lose. And the stuff you lose is the bad stuff. <laughs> you know, you can't, you can't see God and you can't see the wind, but you can see the trees bending. And you can definitely see when God changes people. People that just do 180s. So yeah, I can't see the wind, but I can see the trees. I can see the results of the wind. And yeah, I can't see God, 
but I can see the results of God. There's the rain. Please think about this stuff. It's really hard for me to talk about this stuff because it's hard to share. Because it's been such a huge change in my life and it's... I don't want to say it hurts me to share it, but it, it's just... <laughs> it's such a huge change, it's just kind of uncomfortable. So, I'm going to try to upload this as soon as I can. But think about it. Think about what you have to lose in a good way.